Hello, everyone. It's a joy to be connected again. We have received many wonderful questions in our last discussion about karma. Today, we will discuss how to fulfill your dreams, how to acknowledge how to find your purpose and achieve it, achieve your purpose, achieve your dreams. I'd like to start with a small story. There was a village that was on the shore of a river and villagers would cross that river walking in the water and then go and collect some fruits or go to the other sides, which had a forest full of all kinds of goodies. And on the top of the village, there was a monastery. In this monastery lived some monks who were very recluse. They were really living an ascetic life a life of celibacy, a life of recluse, but they also had to go and collect some of these fruits, sometimes some of these foods that are available in the forest. One day, the master of the uh, monastery was going out with a disciple, a student that we call Amit. He was Amit is his name. And they had come back in the later evening to cross the river. And they found on the shore, on the side of the forest, a woman who was also going there for the same purpose. But they found also that the river was kind of flooding. Suddenly some rains or some snow melted and the river was too high. And this woman tried to cross the river but could not do it and actually her clothes washed away and whatever she has collected washed away and therefore she was practically without any clothes at all. And she was hiding afraid because the village was very conservative and she was wondering what will happen. And it was getting evening and she had no way to go back to the other shore. So the master uh, who was very well built, just took her on his shoulders, covered her with his arms and crossed the river and put her on the other side. Amit was very uh, worried and upset. What's going on? You know, we don't deal with women. We don't do this. We don't do that. And here is somebody who is really uh, not the best kind of situation. What will the people say and how it's going to work and all of that? So he was wondering and thinking all the time. They arrived to the shore, to the village side, so the shore on the village side. The man, the master, the teacher deposited her and they went up towards their monastery. On the way, the Amit was constantly wondering and worrying what's going on and he would lose his way and the master kept telling him, come back, this is, it's this way, not that way. And did you see this and did you see that as the master was watching this flower on the way, this nice uh, blooming fruit or this kind of beautiful vista and all of that as they are watching and walking and Amit kept losing his way. When they arrived at the monastery, um, the master looked at him and said, how are you? Why are you so confused? And the boy said, but you see, you have carried this woman who was practically undressed and, and you had her. And the master said, which woman? He says, the woman you carried from one shore to the other. And the master said, oh, oh, I left her on the other shore. Are you still carrying her? And it was an indication for Amit that he was carrying the situation on his consciousness. And whatever happened on the physical level is something, but what happened on the level of consciousness is something else. I'll come back to this story as we discuss how we find our purpose and how to fulfill our dreams, because it has many significant points that would be interesting to study. Life is magical. Life is a journey. Life is an adventure and we can go through life and make the best out of it but we have to know where to go this is what finding our purpose means where do we go where do we want to go 
And if you want to go somewhere and you are on the map and looking where you want to go, you first have to find where you are, obviously. So you have to first know who you are, what you are, where you are in your life, in order to know where you can go. You can decide to go anywhere. You can make your dream the most grand, absolutely most fulfilling reality of your life. And it is really not your abilities necessarily that are a limitation. It's your vision that can limit you. So we are more limited by our vision than by our abilities. But we still have to know who we are, where we are, what are our possibilities. And that is why one of the greatest wisdoms of all time, as we have discussed in previous uh, webinars and live streams, is to know yourself, know who you are. So who are we? What are we? You can remember that you are somebody who went to school, who did this, who did that. You can look at the mirror and say, this is who I am. But you also know that all of these constantly change through the eyes, through the senses. We are something that is never the same. Through the mind, we can think of ourselves in terms of memories and thoughts about what we did and how we went, but also these are changing all the time. Through our intellect, we can analyze the different values of our reality. Through our sense of self, however, we feel a continuity. We feel that we are something, somebody, some reality, some individual that has a constancy that is there. And if we define ourselves by the changing things, the changing aspects, we will find that it is always incomplete. And even we can define ourselves but by what we want to be in the future. We want to be a doctor, we want to be the president of my, my country, we want to be prime minister, we want to be an engineer, we want to be a pilot, we want to be an artist, a television person, an actor, an actress. We want to be all kinds of possibilities. And these are what also define us in the future. So one thing is very important is that as we go throughout life, we accumulate all kinds of realities that are due to our education, our uh, exposure to different people, and we start defining ourselves through all of these things. And oftentimes, we find ourselves that we define ourselves through the eyes of others, through what others expect, through what others want us to be. And that can also be interesting and helpful to take into consideration. But is it really who we are? Is it really what we want? So we have to be able to get rid of things that have accumulated in our awareness, in our consciousness of our own reality, in order to find the true self that we are. And for this, getting rid of these things that accumulate on us throughout our life is to transcend them. The term to transcend means to go beyond, to go beyond the things that we are facing, that we are faced, that we have faced in the past, that we have been exposed to, that accumulate on us and carry a weight on our mind. So we have to find a purpose and in order to find the purpose, we have to clear ourselves from any stresses and strains and accumulated impressions that are not true to our true self. And therefore, we have to transcend. We have to go beyond these limited values. And there is a technology for that. There is a system for that. It's not just something on the intellectual level or on the feeling, emotional surface level, but there is a technology that allows us to dive within ourselves 
and remove those stresses and strains that have accumulated on our nervous system and that make us believe we are something which we are not because we are much more than that. These stresses and strains can go naturally through the process of transcending because it brings us back to the self and as the mind settles down in the process of transcending, going beyond, then the body settles down and there is a removal of all stresses and strain. And the technology that comes from a very ancient tradition is called transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation is not a technique to think about specific values, to manipulate the mind, or to think about realities uh, that we want to achieve, or you know, regrets that we have, or issues that we have. It is not a contemplation process, and it's not a concentration process. It's a very systematic technique that allows us to dive within ourselves and hundreds and hundreds of research studies have shown that it allows us to be in touch with our inner being, with our inner true self, which is an unbounded field of pure existence that has infinite potentialities, infinite possibilities. And the stresses are naturally released, the body becomes clearer, from cleared from uh, strains, from abnormalities and imbalances. And therefore, on this platform of pure restful being, then we can see clearly. In order to see our purpose and understand what our purpose is and find the steps to achieve our short-term goals and long-term goals in life, we have to be rested. So something is primordial, the one step to really take into consideration when we decide what should I do, what is my purpose, what do I do in life, is first to be really rested and not tired. So even if you have not started yet Transcendental Meditation, remember that when you want to find your next step, your next action in life, don't make decisions when you are tired. Don't make decisions when you are stressed. Take your time. If you are under a situation of fear, of anger, of ill health, of problems, tell yourself, this is a time where I want to stop and take a deep breath and wait a little bit until I'm rested. And then there is more clarity in thinking more ability to see who you are, where you are, and obviously the next step that you want to take. So in this wonderful journey, which is life, we can encounter millions of things. And the path can be having lots of attractive things, disruptive things, easy things, difficult things. But as long as we keep the purpose in mind and we keep the f greater dream in mind, then we are able to achieve the dream. And the difference between a dreamer and a visionary, as Maharishi, who is the teacher who brought transcendental meditation to, world, to the world, is used to say is, a dreamer and a visionary might have the same goal, might find the same purpose and look at it as a purpose. The difference is that the dreamer has no idea how to get there, whereas the visionary has the ability to see the steps that will lead one after the other towards the achievement of the goal. So in our life, to find our purpose, we first establish ourselves in this stable platform of pure being, know that we are infinite pure being, pure intelligence, no matter what is our background, what is around us, what the situations are, the potential for us is huge. It's actually infinite if we can tap into this infinite source of creativity and intelligence, which is our true self, within ourselves, And then the things that we want to achieve 
will depend on our situations, of course, and circumstances. But we are not a football of situations and circumstances. We are not here to achieve a life that this or that or the other has thought that it's best for us. We are the only ones who can know truly where to go. Of course, we can get guidance if we are young from our parents, from our teachers. We have situations where we have certain qualities, certain uh, aspects that we are probably more good at. For example, somebody knows how to draw well. They might want to become a painter or an architect, somebody who has a musician's uh, feelings, very great sensitivity to music. They can sing well. They might want to become a singer or a musician. Somebody likes to take pictures or be uh, in a movie making. They like to, to do it. These are things that come naturally when we are clear in our thinking, when we are clear in our mind. And therefore, we have to put for ourselves what we can call a long-term and a short-term and a shorter-term purposes. So what is my purpose in life? It could be what is my purpose today? What are the things that I have to do today? I have to do my homework if I'm a student. I have to go to the office if I am working in an office. I have to see my patients if I'm a doctor. I have to prepare for my flight if I am a pilot. And all of these are specific goals. And if we do them with a clear mind, no matter what they are, they will be bringing fulfillment to us. Ultimately, the ultimate goal is to be able to live with great happiness. That is a purpose that is very important, be it on a short term, on a long term, or on a longer term. Happiness is the indication that we are fulfilling our purpose. And this can be very different for different people. So what makes us happy? What gives us fulfillment? First, being in the self, established in the self, and then perform action. In the Bhagavad Gita, which also is, comes from the Vedic tradition, there is a saying in uh, yoga sta kuru karmani, established in being, perform action. So the action is performed based on being. And therefore, we have the purpose in mind, but we achieve through steps, and each step has its value, has its quality. And we clear our mind from things that have been imposition on us or we've been carried. Somebody has told me this, I have been failed in this exam, or I have succeeded or not so well in this, I have done that, I have had this relation, it worked this way, that way. Carrying all of this on our consciousness makes us lose the way. In the same way as the story of Amit going up the mountain and losing his way because he was thinking, what this master did? He carried this woman. What will people say about it? And the master did a good thing and left it behind. It's not on his consciousness. So we live through consciousness. We don't live necessarily so much as through specifics. The specifics are there. Of course, we live through them in that way. But it's how we experience them, how we see them, how we live through them, that is most important. And therefore, remember what brings you fulfillment when you have proper intention, when you have proper desire, and to achieve the highest. So how to find your purpose? Think of the highest possible that you can imagine. For some, it can be a famous actor. For others, a famous doctor. For others, a politician, for some, a military person, for some, uh, uh, you know, a pilot, or even simple jobs that one feels, I don't want complicated things. I want to raise a family. I want children. I want all of these specific purposes are truly simple and personal and 
the value of life is not on the specifics. It's mostly on how you live the specifics, on how you are fulfilled, on how you are fulfilling your dream. So we want us, our dream to truly, to truly devour our life. We don't want life to go on and the ins and outs and details of life to devour our dream. So let's not think of limitations, although we have to know what are our circumstances. If you are in a family where you have a business and you have possibilities of participating in that business, it means nature has put you there. It, there is something maybe to think about in that direction. So you look for directions from life, directions from nature. If we think that life is disorderly and it's all chaos and then nothing is worth anything. But life is orderly. There is a reason for things. And life gives us indications and directions. So we have to tap these indications, tap into them, feel our ears open, our eyes open, see the past, because life is going to give us a direction. And we see that more clearly when our awareness is clear, when our vision is clear. And therefore, again, I come back to this, going back to the self, opening the eyes, finding opportunities, and these opportunities are there for us, they will be there, they will guide us, and on that basis we can truly achieve something that is supreme. In reality also, while achieving, while doing, once we have found our short-term goals and our long-term goals, we have to remember that we have a past and we have what we call a karma. And therefore, while acting, think of the action, having in your heart the purpose, but act in the best way possible and don't be attached to the final goal or have it too much as a stress on your mind. For this, I can take an example. If you are playing a game, for example, of uh, having to achieve something in the game, a strategy game, and then somewhere in the game it shows you the score that is there. Now, if you're constantly looking at the score and not focusing on the game itself, then you are not as efficient. You are using part of your nervous system activity and possibility worrying about the goal. And therefore, you will not be achieving as efficiently the purpose. So in order to fulfill the purpose, look at the action that you are doing. Do your action in the best possible way, and then the goal will be there for you, the achievement will be there for you, and the results will be there for you. But if they are not there, then at least you will have the satisfaction to have done the best that you can, that to have had the best action that is possible. And then if the goal is not achieved this time, it can be achieved next time. And we are not so worried about it because the path also has to be enjoyable. So while keeping the purpose in mind, enjoy the path, enjoy the things that life brings to us. As we said, life is a journey, and in that journey there are many beautiful things that are there, like the master and the student Amit climbing the mountain. The master knew the path, and he looked at the path, and he followed it. He had it in mind. And at the same time, he saw so many beautiful things on the way. Whereas the student, I mean, was worried. Constantly his awareness was carrying something that worried him all the time. Instead of moving on and getting to the goal, so that's why the master tells him, I have left her on the shore. You are still carrying her. So carrying something is often on, this, on the consciousness level. You know, if you have 
projects to make, if you have things to undertake, and you postpone them. You think they are not there, I'm tired, I'll do this later. Let's say you have a student who has four or five things to do, some homework to do, and this and that, and keep pushing it away and playing with something else. Now, the feeling on the surface level as if, okay, I'm having myself entertained, but in fact, the nervous system is carrying this load all the time. So we carry on our mind the things that you know, are to be done that we are not done, that we have not done. And therefore, make a plan, write things up, and see that you achieve them as quickly as possible, and take this load off your back, and keep on progressing with steps of evolution to reach the highest possible. So dream big dreams, and don't have doubts. The more you give doubt, the more you give power to the doubt. So you more there is, the more there is doubt in your life, the more doubt will be powerful in your life. So you have to trust life, trust yourself, act from a platform of clarity of thinking. You will find your purpose from the inner heart when you are rested and clear and focus on the purpose and use that infinite reservoir of intelligence and creativity that is within you to achieve the highest possible goals in fulfillment, for fulfillment and greater happiness and bliss in all aspects of undertaking. We have some questions here. William says, how do we do our best under pressure? So pressure, is something that we encounter all the time, and uh, it's part of uh, the life that is going faster and faster and demanding on us. And the best is to remember to take good rest. It is very important to realize that what we do on the surface, in our body and all of that, comes from our mind, from our thinking, and that our thinking is based on our being, on our intelligence, on our consciousness. So if we are pressured by the outside and lose contact with the inner self, then that is becoming a strain, and the strain adds to stress to the physiology. With time, the physiology gets tired, can become sick and get into problems and the achievement is not there. So it sounds contradictory, but when you are under pressure, it's the time to take a stop. Stop and go back to yourself. Time to make a halt and realize that actually you are stronger than the pressure. If you are taken away by the outside circumstances, you are a football of situations and circumstances, which means it's the situations that are throwing you from one place to the other, from one place to the other. What you want to do is stop. So if you are really under pressure, one can think, I should act more, I should not sleep, I should not rest, I should not do this because there is pressure to work. What you have to do is take a second, take a minute, and go back to yourself, settle down, and then there is clarity in the thinking, and when there is clarity, the steps of uh, action that will lead to the resolution of the situation that is putting you under pressure become clearer, and the pressure dissipates. So don't be under pressure. It's our choice also to take a time off, and sometimes we feel, oh, I have no time. Where is the time? I'm under pressure. Every second counts. But a second is something that can be used properly or can be misused and can be wasted. If one is not settled and clear, then one can spend hours to achieve something and the pressure will increase. If one is clear and settled, then one can achieve things in a very efficient way and the pressure is relieved. So pressure is how much I can do within a certain period of time. If you are more efficient, then it is easier to do a lot with 
lesser amount of time, and therefore there is no pressure in that case. Kathleen asking, how do you settle on a new career when you have many abilities? Choose what your heart tells you, what you feel is best. So you have many abilities. Maybe you don't have to uh, choose only one of them. You know, you like to be a musician. At the same time, you like to be a doctor. There is no harm. Many doctors are great uh, mus musicians. Usually I found they like the violin or the piano. Uh, this is the usual for doctors. And even though they have so much work, great, they can do this as a profession, this as a hobby. And if they feel one is bringing them more success, more fulfillment on a short and a long-term basis, because we have to see what's the long-term basis also. You know, is this something that inspires me as a career or as a hobby or as an interest? So life is full and can allow us to use all our abilities and sometimes even find a profession or a goal that requires all of these abilities uh, together. Uh, you know, people who are good in their hands, for example, I'm taking the example of a doctor, maybe they become a surgeon, you know, they can be a pianist, but also, but also a surgeon that uses precision in their activity or they can be a pilot or they can do all kinds of things. So it's your inner heart. Be settled and then you will find where your heart leads you. And don't feel always you have to choose always one or the other. Have the, cl uh, the, the clarity and the flexibility to actually be able to integrate many things and allow your abilities in many directions to blossom. Leo is saying, is the destiny of our purpose already written and set? To some extent, there are things that are written and set. We are born in a certain family, in a certain place. We are having certain possibilities. So these are what we can call part of the human condition, the things we come with. And why we come with these things? We don't know. Previous karma, whatever life brings to us, we find ourselves in a situation. The ultimate actually reason why we are in a specific situation is uh, because this situation gives us the most possibilities for our kind of physiology, our kind of mind, our baggage of things that we have in our heritage, our situation to achieve. So life is orderly and we find ourselves in a certain place, and based on that certain place, we don't have to stay there. If we are there and we like it and we enjoy it and we feel it's natural, then we continue there. If we feel that there is something more that we want, that something great that we can achieve, and this is in our heart, even that desire itself is part of what is said and what is written. So we shouldn't discard that. And therefore, uh, we listen to our deep feelings when we are again rested, not when we are stressed and we have watched so many advertisings on television that tell us you have to eat this, you have to do this, this is, and you see people, they are happy eating the big cake or something like that. And you feel, oh, I have also to eat the big cake. And therefore it becomes, somebody else's desire, not your desire, that somehow gets imprinted on one's mind and then one starts to be influenced by that. But not that kind of, uh, of impression should be the guiding light for our life. So what should be the guiding light? Get rested, clear your stresses, transcend, go out of the thing that is the situations and circumstances and see in your heart what is best to achieve and then you can achieve it. We have freedom and we have ability to achieve the maximum and so let's do it. Let's have our dreams be bigger than life. Amarama, can your purpose contradict what you feel it is? So can your purpose be in contradiction, let's say, with, with what you feel, which means you feel something and yet your purpose might be something else. Now, 
it is possible, but if you continue with good intentions, with full heart, you can discover that it was something else that you wanted, and you can shift and change. So there might be then, therefore, a smaller purpose and a bigger purpose. If you have, let's say, a bigger purpose in life, that your DNA and your, your abilities and your conditions of life actually want you to become something, and you now want something else, and you are confused, uh, but you still feel, I like to do this thing, and that is my purpose. And you go on and doing that thing, because this is how you feel, it's great, and then you will find out that actually it's not that, so fine. You want some bigger purpose, some other purpose in life, and life can be changing like that. So we have also to be open to growth, to understanding, to transformation. It doesn't mean that you made a mistake at the beginning. It means that life put you on that path for a reason, so you understand something, you discover something. There is a reason for everything. There is a message in everything. But don't see too much into it either. You know, there are small things that happen that are insignificant. You look into your heart, you want to do this, you do it, you find, after all, it's not my final purpose. Then you can shift, then you can change, then you can grow. It's okay to be clearer, adjust more, and guide yourself towards, ultimately, enlightenment and fullness of life, which is the ultimate purpose of life, is to reach that value of liberation from limitations, liberation from uh, small things, and become truly enlightened, living higher states of consciousness, and fulfilled in every way that is possible. But some steps are needed in the relative, as long as they are happening on the inner development of pure being within ourselves, knowing ourselves purely who we are, what we are, and liberating ourselves from the changing fields of life, then we can achieve the highest purpose ultimately to be living in bliss and in, in great state of fulfillment, which we call, in other words, enlightenment. Anand is asking, what is the cure for pessimism? Pessimism can happen because of stresses, of strains, because of bad experiences, because of loss sometimes, uh, of, you know, situations that have not been favorable, or by nature one is more tending to look at things from a negative perspective. And that is because of strains that have been there or had been on hereditary level. So there are all kinds of situations and circumstances that make somebody feel negative or doesn't have hope. And, you know, that's what we call pessimism sometimes becomes borderline a depression. So I the best way to, to get over that is to know the true reality and not the imaginary reality that is coming due to stresses and strains and outer situations and problems that one can see in life. And for that is really the solution is to go back to the self. Because going back to the self, we find this infinite field of pure intelligence with pure intelligence pure being within ourself and therefore when you have that within yourself you naturally become optimist because then you have a vision of life that is based on infinite potential on infinite possibilities life that is fullness that grows in fullness that expands in fullness because one is already that, and it's not to look at it outside or depend on the outside, but going back to the self gives that inner strength, inner clarity, that then allows us to see things 
in the proper direction, in the proper way. Otherwise, we are wearing glasses, and the glasses are colored of different kinds, and some glasses can be a little dark, and we see dark things. So how do we improve it? You know, if pessimism is like dark glasses, then clearing up the glasses will allow us to see the proper thing. And how do we clear it? By removing our stresses and strain, by transcending, practicing transcendental meditation and all its advanced techniques, have shown scientifically that people become more positive, they are more successful in life, more creative, and then life starts blossoming in its fullness. I think this is, comes to the end of our webinar today and looking forward to being with you more and on many more subjects.